All right, so in this video, I want to improve this function a little bit. So one thing I've noticed last time, when I tried to go here and do a right join, I got all the column positions here mixed up. So let's go try to fix that really quickly here. It seems that when we get the joined results from this function, when there are no results sometimes, it doesn't actually fill those up. So we have to do something here. And I'm kind of glad we're using V8 because this is gonna make it probably a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first create a list of column names before I try to do this mapping of the function. So I'm gonna do the list of keys that's going to be a set. So this is going to make my life easier because we're using V8. So I need to create a unique list of column names from this results array. And to do that, I'm just going to take that results and we'll just do a for each loop on that. Each one of those results is going to be basically one of the rows. So we'll do an arrow function here. And that row is going to be basically the array object, which means we should be able to get the keys out of it by doing this. So that should get me all the keys. What I want to do with all those keys that I get, I want to basically add all of them to this set. So I'm going to use for each again and for each key. I'm going to basically take that keys set and add that key to it. I think that should work. Now, the reason I'm using a set here is because set only adds unique items. So if there is already a column with that name is not going to be added to the list. It's only going to add unique columns. So this way we'll get a unique column list from all the rows. Now, once we get that unique column list, then we can take that keys. And then over here, instead of using objects, keys are whatever I did here, I'm going to use that uh, keys, but that keys is going to be a set, not an array. So to convert that to an array, I'm going to use deconstruction here and I need another dot here just like that for this keys over here. So great things from V8 here to do this type of stuff. Let's go check what happened. Look at that. Now we have things in the right place for whatever reason. It adds this true stuff. I don't know what that is that comes from the right join. I would probably have to look in the documentation to see what this function does that adds those. But I also did notice that this doesn't have a name and that's because I'm still using this to get the keys. So I think if I replace this with my deconstructed keys, might be a better idea to put that in a variable, but I'm just gonna do this. See, there it is. It gives us this right join column, apparently, that this library creates that gives us trues for whatever reason for certain rows, which we don't really care. But yeah, fair enough. So that's the right stuff in the right place. I did also notice that they do have a full join type, I think, according to that documentation. I should have probably read about this before, but, you know, I never do my homework. So, and it's just full outer join. And some people who watch my videos hate that. But if I did do homework for all videos, I would probably never make any videos. But there it is. So we can now do also full outer join. You just have to make sure you do full outer join, not just full join, which is what I've tried before. So that's pretty good. The other thing I want to do, I want to make sure that I'm able to expand my array. So if I went, let's say to row six, now I'm including this blanks and see how it is including those blanks in this. 
So I may want to change this that I remove all the blank rows out of our data before we get to all this joining part. So this is the function I've made here that takes the array and converts it to an array of objects in here. Now what I'm gonna do before that happens right here on top, I'm gonna make sure we take that data and remove all the blank rows out of it. So I'm gonna do that by adding a filter to this data. And here we'll take the row and do an arrow function. And we basically want to make sure if we run all method on our array, which will also have a parameter here. So I'm gonna call this C for cell, I guess. If all of them are equal to blank, and we want to do the negative of this. So basically we want to remove that out of this. Let me save this. So because if I did the opposite, it would only keep the blanks. Now I want to remove the blanks. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to say if all of them are blank, then get rid of this. And this should be saved in that data variable back. So let's go back and check if that worked. Not so much, our all is not a function. So I'm gonna have to go check what the thing is called. All right, so that's called every the method, not all. Too many languages, hard to keep track of. There it is, now the blanks are removed, which should allow us to basically do expanded ranges like this and still have this work. And then if we're adding more data, it should just hopefully auto refresh. Let me just switch this back to a left join for a second. So let's try to add something to this. So I'm gonna do three and we have Smith for that. So here we go. Now we got three and Smith. Now it's working off of this data set and it auto populates, we're good. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to see if I can add an option to do unlimited number of tables. So let's go back. So this is our first array. So all the other arrays, I want as an optional arrays here to be passed. And I'm gonna try to use newer features from V8 to see if that works with Google Sheets functions too. That will be great if it does. So I'm gonna try to use a deconstruction here for the third parameter. Instead of saying two, I'm gonna say arrays. And then we'll just loop through those. Well, we have to loop through them if they exist. So, well, actually before we do that, let's just test and make sure it works. So I'm gonna take that and do for each for this and that will again be a callback function. So for each array in that deconstructed arrays object in here, we want to basically just do this push. So I'm just gonna cut this and paste it right here and pass this AR in here. Now let's go check if this works. That will be great if it does. Seems like it does unless something didn't refresh. So let me go back and test this with a third table for a second just to make sure this actually works. Let's make another one here. All right, so this is gonna be my third table and I'm gonna join it on this B column to this to see if that works. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna add this third table as an array right here and go back here. And this is from this as this, left join this on that column. And then we're gonna do left join question mark again, which should be the third table. And we're gonna give it an alias name 
as T on. So from that left table, that should be B, which should be equal to from this T table B as well. I think I got that right. Let's hit enter and see what happens. Yep. Awesome. All combined three tables. How awesome is that? So I'm going to go back and deal. Now, the problem with this, the reason I need to deal with something is because if we don't pass these and we only just give it one table, and let's say we want something pretty basic, that's just going to say select something from something, something like this, right? Well, that actually worked and it didn't even give me any errors. So maybe I don't even have to do anything. I was thinking that maybe I have to handle this if there are no arrays passed, but it didn't even complain and I'm just gonna move on. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit here. The function seems to perform and we can run our SQL statements and we can run join operation with multiple tables if necessary. So now if I want to join, for example, this table to it with prices based on this B left join my secondary table here. Now, because of this, we have to give this aliases because we have to say what column we're joining on. For now, we'll just do our on statement. That's fine. L dot B equals to R dot b which should work just fine and we said select a and b that's pretty much what we're getting if i want to get the price then i'm gonna have to add it to our column list which doesn't seem to match very well. So maybe we have to use aliases for returns as well. So we'll do r.price here. Yep, and we should probably for clarity do this over here as well. Okay, so that's our join. It actually works with aliases all fine. Do I have to use as here or does it also work with a short version? No, it works like this too. So we can also just do this. And we have a SQL join statement. Let's move this to a different sheet. That should still work just fine with our references to other worksheets. Let's actually move this one to its own worksheet like this. And I'm gonna move this one to its own worksheet Let's call this people, call this prices, call this data, something like that. And this is our results from those data sets. And I should be able to just drop the Android reference for both of this and it should work the same way. Now we should be able to go back and add more information to any of this. So let's say I want to add a matching price for this 55. So I go here and do 55 is 99, 99, something like that. If I go back and look at my results, works just fine. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video and you know, if somebody wants to try this and give me some feedback, again, I want to emphasize that I didn't really write any of this. I just wrote the function to handle this in Google Sheets, but all the hard work was done here using this library. I just basically implemented that library in Google Sheets to make it work in this particular case. And basically, if you want more docs about how the statements work, you should probably just look up their documentation. That should work fine. Although without looking for any documentation, I was able to basically just use pretty much standard SQL statements and it works just fine, no problem. And if I didn't want to get like this one that doesn't have a price, I could just do an inner join, right? So if I don't do left join and do a regular join, that should remove that one and just give me 
results that match. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.